The following is the transcript of a journal found in the wall of the cellar at Sweet Apple Lakers. The book itself is thick, case bound, and bears the words Sweet Apple Acres Crop Rotation, Spring of 83, 2, on the cover. There are several dried blood stains along the spine and back cover of the book, but no blood stains were found on the property. The farm itself was found with several lights hung on the orchard around the farmhouse and barn half of which had been broken and the remainder of which were deprived of power. Both the farmhouse and the barn had been stocked with supplies similar to the library where Twilight Sparkle's journal had been discovered. Behind the farmhouse, three plots of soil, identified by Twilight Sparkle's journal as fresh graves, were discovered. They were found to be empty upon exhuming. The first 287 pages of the journal cover information about the usage and yield of the orchard and sweet apple acres across the past few years. This information is extremely detailed, and was searched for any important notes or writing, and none were found. The following pages are blank, and then the book was used as a journal by Applejack, a member of the Apple family who lived on the farm. As with Miss Sparkle's journal, the validity of events recorded here are under question, and they conflict with the account of the journal found at the town's library. April 18th. Well, really know what to write, honestly. It's been two days since the sun didn't come up. I figured I could start keeping a journal, keep myself occupied, and get my mind off everything else going on. And this is the only thing that we really had at hoof. Papa Bloom's still shaken up, wondering if Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle are all right. We're all doing our best to keep calm, but I know the worry is starting to get to us all. So far, Granny Smith's pulled out the photo albums, her knitting set, and more than one cookbook. And Big Mac, well... He is much more talkative than usual. Meanwhile, things seem uh, to make better sense in some campfire stories that are going on. Can't even step a hoof out of a candle's wick light without getting the chills. The darkness is just unnatural. There's not a light in the sky, and the only thing you can see in town is the twinkling in the distance. I hope the girls are all right. Dash is the only one not with Twilight at the library. But I know that girl can take care of herself. The rest, I just hope they'll stay hunkered down and wait till whatever this is, leaves. For us, we've got all the supplies we should need. And I'm not sure if this will all blow over soon. Why, I bet Twilight's got her nose in half a dozen books right now trying to find an answer. If anyone can figure it out, she can. I really hope she can. The margins of this page are filled with several numbers, ranging from 6 to 15. Several are crossed out and followed by a question mark. Some instances of the number 12, 10, and 13 are circled. April 19th. We got a surprise today, to say the least. It was around one in the afternoon, according to the clock at least. Big Mac was helping me move a few more supplies over from the barn. We saw lights getting closer from the town. Didn't know how to react, really. Granny Smith kept Apple Bloom away from the window as we locked the doors. Next thing we know, there was a dozen ponies marching through the orchard with lanterns, packs, and a couple of those lights they'd brought from Canterlot. They were wary of our trusting eyes. But I had Big Mac come out with me to meet him. I recognized a few faces from town and some of the ponies from Canterlot that arrived in the train. Then I saw Rainbow Dash at the back of the crowd. I was a little more than relieved to see her all right. But then one of the others stepped forward said his name was Spanner, and that he was one of the investigators that had come to town. He said they'd been holed up in a hotel near the edge of Ponyville. After some talk and worry, they assumed we would have enough supplies to share and spare for them to stay. We hadn't really taken full stock yet, but I talked it over with Granny Smith, Big Mac, and even Apple Bloom. We couldn't just turn all of them away, even if we had less than a hoof full of scraps. Spent the next few hours hanging up the lights and getting them running, Sorting out supplies and setting up some room for everyone in the barn. From the looks of it, we have enough food and water for every pony to last us a few weeks. And there's still a few trees close to the farmhouse we can get some food from if we need it. I have some space in the house for Dash, so the whole barn is packed full. And then we set up watch rotation on Spanner's recommendation, which Big Mac, Dash, and I volunteered for again. I'm glad we've got every pony safely at heart, but I'll be damned if I don't do what I can to help. April 20th. 
It's actually kind of normal on the farm today. We kept our guests occupied out in the barn, telling stories and enjoying some of Granny's cooking. Apple Bloom had one of her classmates to play with and talk with, even if it wasn't Sweetie Belle or Scootaloo. Dash kept complaining about not being able to stretch her wings beyond circling the barn, but we took the time to try and relax together, even if it was just talking and praying the others were still safe and warm. You can barely see the library from here. It makes me wish we had a telescope or something to be sure, but it looks lit. I also took some time to talk with Spanner. He came from another investigator, Sugarcane, and three guards, and said the rest of their party had bunkered down at the old town hall. He wasn't too worried about them, though. He said they're more than tough enough. I tried to ask him if they had any idea what was going on, or if they were working on a solution, but he wouldn't talk about it. That's probably for the best. For now, I just need some sleep. Got an early watch tomorrow that I need to be wide awake for. April 21st. I had a nightmare. Feels like it was a bad one. Whispers, shadows, and running through a dark forest. Like I was in a ghost story. I just can't seem to remember it all now. Like it's foggy or some memory from a dozen years ago. It was there when I woke up. Just a second. Being scared for my life, for my family. With my heart racing a mile a minute, and now it's gone. I know it sounds far-fetched, but... After I heard some others talking about Bad Dreams 2, I talked with them about it. They didn't seem to much of them clearly, either. Maybe it's all just the nerves, I mean, Big Mac, Dash, and it didn't seem like they were unsettled. And Apple Bloom looks more chipper than the past few days. Anyway, I didn't end up getting much more sleep because of that. But I kept going strong for everyone else's benefit. Something else is nagging at me, though. I overheard one of the guards talking with Spanner earlier, about wanting to do something instead of sitting around. I think we want to try to get to another town. See if it's like this. I know he probably won't let me go with it. But if they tried to, everyone else probably wouldn't react calmly. Hopefully I'm right. We'll just stay put. April 22nd. There was a crash behind the barn in the early morning. Where we were keeping the crates of supplies. Big Mac and the guards tried to keep everyone calm while Spanner, Sugarcane, and I rushed back to see what was going on. I was surprised at what we found. We hung a couple of lanterns around the barn and farmhouse. Three of them had been smashed to the ground, luckily without clouds in a fire. There were splinters of wood from two crates scattered about. The insides had been picked clean. There weren't any hoof prints in the dirt or claw marks or anything. But that wasn't the strangest thing. The air felt odd, almost dead. Though it wasn't cold, something made my bones shiver, even in the light. It wasn't like the feeling of you being washed everywhere. It took hours for it to really go away. I didn't tell anyone about it, except for Dash later, I, because I thought it was just a feeling. Anyway, I was a little cautious about coming back to everyone else with the news like that. So were Spanner and Sugar King. When we got back, they told everyone the crates had been stacked poorly, and unfortunately everything in them was ruined. It didn't seem like everyone was happy with that answer, but at least getting an answer calmed everyone down. Till one of the guards from yesterday started a ruckus. He'd been off on a corner for most of the time he wasn't on watch. The next thing I know, he's marching over to Spanner and shouting about twiddling our hooves instead of doing something. Then three other ponies jumped up and complained about the same thing, and everyone else started arguing until Granny Smith managed to quiet all down. I can't say it was the most civil discussion I've ever seen, but it's decided now. Two of them are leaving tomorrow. They're heading north towards Strottenham. A little less than a day's trot, so whatever they actually find, it or not, we'll hear back about two days or three. I don't know what's out there causing this, but I pray they make it back safely. They will, but not as themselves. There are numerous watermarks on this page and the next. April 23rd. The guards set off in the morning. Everyone's been real quiet since. I guess they're all anxious to see them come back, even if it'll be two days at least. I took Dash aside for a bit to see how she was feeling. She's as chipper and tough as ever, though. But she wishes she could at least get some answers instead of lazing about on the farm all day and night. I'd like some answers, too. But Spanner and Sugarcane don't seem prone to opening up about all this. Maybe Dash and I could try looking for something. But I don't have any idea where to start. Always watching. In fact... I've been thinking about yesterday and the broken boxes behind the barn. If something's out there, 
and that's been causing all this. And it can just run up, broke three lanterns, pick two crates clean, and vanish without a trace. Could we find it? Could we stop it? I don't think anyone's doubting that whatever this is can't, shouldn't, be natural. But then what could it be? Always waiting. I guess the only hope I have now is that Twilight will arrive at the farm with a plan and an answer. Maybe after we see the sun come up. Some part of me knows it's unlikely, but sometimes that's what hopes are for. Take your mind off things. For the next chance. I had another nightmare. It was pitch black, but I know I was still at the farm. I could hear something clawing at the scratching at the doors and windows, even at the floor. Someone was close, but I couldn't see who. They just kept on asking why over and over again. I tried to speak to comfort them, but I came out. Then they were gone. It wasn't a scream. The floor didn't give out. Nothing grabbed them. They were just gone. It got colder, deep in my bones. Then I heard their voice again. They told me to stop fighting. That's when I woke up. For the next feast. If the other dream was the one I couldn't remember, this was the one that won't go away. I've tried to sleep, but I just hear the scratching again. Then I get cold. I don't want to wake anyone up, but I have to tell someone about this in the morning. It'll be gone by then, if I'm really lucky. For the fun of it. April 24th. I don't know what to think anymore. The way I look at all this just doesn't make sense. Just because it seems in sync. Things were quiet till around noon. That's when the guards we'd seen two days ago showed back up. Except it wasn't from the north towards Trottenham. They came from the south. Doesn't mean the needle's not skipping. They were shouting and screaming nonsense when they galloped in. That got our attention before the faint lantern lights. They were out of breath, their gear and manes ragged and dirty. They were mumbling about shadows, trees, and mazes. At least from what I can understand. It took us a while to calm them down, but the only thing we got out of them was a week. Was a, a week. Then they were out like a light. We didn't find out until later, when one of them woke back up. We had moved them to the farmhouse to give them more comfort. I volunteered to keep watch over them, and I was called for Spinner when he started to stir. It took a few minutes for him to start rambling again, but this time it was clearer. Then they headed north. Towards the woods, but as soon as they got in, the trees never stopped. They doubled back after an hour, but the path was different. Then they started hearing things in the distance and seeing figures at the corner of their eyes. He said they ran for days, at least a week. Well, that's impossible. They were here a few days ago. Banner told me not to tell the others, just to not get them worried about feverish ramblings. My curiosity got the better of me. I talked to Dash, and I asked her how long the sky had been dark before she saw the others. Before they got here. She said five days. It's all perspective. You can't trust your own. April 25th. The nightmares don't want to go away. Every time I close my eyes or sleep, or not, I hear the clawing, and I see eyes, I think. But they feel so empty. Pitch black, but I know they're there. Watching. Everyone else is still worrying about the guards that came back. Muttering to themselves and each other. They're definitely improving, but... Seem a little shook up still. I can still see the library from here. But... What if they've been stuck there for weeks longer than us? What if... They're gone? Didn't tell anyone else what about I heard. I'm sure Spanner wouldn't let me anyway. For the best for their comfort. What about mine? April 26th. And the guards were back on their hoofs today. At least for a bit. The Spanner wanted them to keep on resting. Figured he knew what's best for them. In the meantime, we've had to ask some of the others to help keep watch. They were willing, but I just wondered if they were able to. I had a better night's sleep than the last few, I suppose. I can still remember the other nightmares, but at least I didn't have one last night. I have to appreciate the little things, I suppose. In fact, I had a dream that felt like a regular old day back in Ponyville. As with Patrick in a new trick, 
Ray already had some new dresses to show off, and Twilight kept rambling about the rare tome she got shipped in from Canterlot. It really felt a lot like all this had just been some fever dream till I woke up. I know this will be over soon. It just feels like it. It will. In screams, in submission, or in both. This page is covered in several water stains. April 27th. It all happened so fast. Dash and I were keeping watch a little late into the night. Two others. Everyone else was either asleep or relaxing in the barn. That's when we heard a scream. It came from over by the farmhouse where one of the others was patrolling. We ran over as fast as we could, while Big Mac kept everyone else huddled in the barn. When we got there, his lantern was broken. And we could only see him at the edge of our own. He was clawing at the ground like someone was pulling him, and then something black reached out and just swallowed him whole. I tried to run forward to help him, or to see what was doing this. All that was left were the grooves he left in the dirt, stretching out into the dark. By the time Spanner got to us, there was another scream back at the barn. I thought it might have been another one of those things, but when we got back, Big Mac was trying to restrain one of the ponies. His coat was stained with this black sort of soot or something, and it looked like he was spreading... He was shouting for us to let it end and give up. One of the others was on the ground, trying to nurse a wound. Banner was quicker than me. He ran up, kicked him in the head, and he was out cold. We tied him up in the corner, helped nurse the other pony's wounds, and then we told Spanner about what happened to the pony on the other side of the farm. I wasn't surprised when he told everyone to grab as many supplies as they could carry and move to the house. But I was when we left the pony tied up in the barn. For now, we just need to stay safe in the light. I won't let it happen again. The following phrases are written in the margins of the page multiple times. I did not speak up. I did not say anything. Was I afraid? Did I know? Did he deserve the worst? Had I already given in? April 28th. Everyone's been on edge, asking Spanner questions and demanding answers. He's just like the rest of us. He tried to explain that they're just as in the dark as we are, but promised they would keep everyone safe. There's only five of them, with two of them resting upstairs. But I trust Spanner wants to do what most he can to protect everyone. The rest of the time, we just kept watch. The lights we left out in the orchard still lit up. And even if those things try to knock them down, they'll let us know where they are. Maybe that will be enough warning to keep us safe. Meanwhile, Dash is more wound up than before. I had to stop her from flying in circles in the living room three times. She was upset for the first time since she got here. That's all she has left. I saw one of the lights in town go out. So faint from here now. But I know I saw it. I don't think it was the library, but... One by one. Lights and lives. Going out. I just want this to be over. I just want everyone to be safe. I want to see everyone smiling again. They are. This page's hoof writing is different from the other pages, and the letters RD are written on the top left corner of the page. April 30th. Things were bad yesterday. Those things came back from inside. I was with Applejack, Big Mac, and Targe, one of the guards, towards the end of our watch. Banner said the other two guards that had left for a bit would be back to their hooves today. But that they were all right. We came down with sugar cane and them. We let them know that we hadn't seen anything near the orchard and said our good nights. Applejack and I were ready to give her bed, and she stopped me from flying in circles again. She started to try writing in this journal, and I started to argue. Then we heard a thud from downstairs. We ran as quick as we could, well, as quickly as Applejack could, and we saw one of the guards collapse at the foot of the stairs. I tried to get close, but Applejack stopped me when she saw the blood. At, at least it seemed like blood, but it was thicker and black. Then his body just started twitching and writhing on the floor, trying to get back up, but it didn't seem like he was awake at all, because his body was still limp. Applejack looked shocked, and I guess I was too. But I pushed him away so I could get by. I kept an eye on him while Applejack went to the others. 
His body just kept twitching and his coat started turning black. I started backing away before Applejack came back and told me that she found the others. Hold up by the kitchen. When we got to them, though, their group was smaller than I remembered. The other guard that relieved us was gone. Banner said he'd changed too. And the couple that owned the hotel that they'd left from wasn't there. We all just kept hunkering down for a while and tried to tend to a colt one of the guards had bitten. He was the one that had been injured in the barn the other day, and he was looking worse by the minute. Things were quiet for a while, and if we hadn't relaxed, we might have been able to stop what had happened. We didn't notice the colt's coat changing, or that he grabbed a knife from the floor until he grabbed Apple Bloom. We tried to calm him down and keep Applejack from charging him, but he just case kept saying it was all hopeless. I started to relax for a bit, but I couldn't get Apple Bloom away before he cut her and bit her on one of the legs. He was gone not long after Big Mac got a hold of him. Applejack and Granny Smith were tending to Apple Bloom, but Sugar Cane and Spanner walked up to them. They wanted to cut off her leg. I could already see it starting to turn black. They said they were sure that there wasn't enough evidence to contact with these things or being injured by them wasn't enough to make a change. They thought that if we cut off what was growing, that would do something. I didn't know what to think, but it didn't sound entirely crazy, at least the way they were defending it. But Applejack wouldn't hear of it. We gathered all the supplies we could and moved upstairs, blocking off the exit. But it was quiet for a few hours, and Apple Bloom just got worse. It was feverish. This black stuff just kept spreading, slowly. No one seemed to want to say anything about how angry Applejack had gotten. He probably would have kept saying no, at least until Granny Smith took her aside. I don't know what she said to her. She was holding back tears when she came back. Banner grabbed the medical kit and the knife. It was only messy for a moment. Apple Bloom was feeling a lot better a few hours later. Applejack doesn't want to think about what happened. He still wanted me to write it all down, in case someone else finds this. I can't blame her. I would want to forget it if I was my family, too. This page has the letters AJ in the corner. May 1st. Hard to think that we've been holed up here on the farm for two weeks. Now things keep getting worse. I've been resting since we moved upstairs but I think I'll be ready to help with the watch soon again. The nightmares haven't come back, but it's still hard to sleep. I can hear what sounds like hoofsteps downstairs, but no one has seen anything come from the stairs. I don't have a view of the town from my bedroom window. Maybe I'll have a look tomorrow. Rainbow Dash came to talk with me for a bit, before bed, and let me know everyone else is doing fine. She's worried about me. I know, even if she wouldn't say it. Some of the others are too. I'm just tired. We all are, aren't we? I wanted to ask her if I should have said no, but that's not for me, her to say. I have Bloom will be fine. She's safe. We're safe. I just know it. Not for long. I had to wake up in the night to help Granny. Al Bloom's dressing seemed to change. She said that she was getting better. Fever was gone and there wasn't any sign of infection. She's really a trooper. I really even saw her flinch while we did it. She can't move much on her own, but her spirits are holding up all the same. I'm proud. May 2nd. The first two paragraphs are all scratched out. I kept hearing it all night in my dreams. Just a whisper in the dark, behind the walls, and from the downstairs. I couldn't understand it. But I felt angry. It was so silent. But I couldn't ignore it. Dark, but I could see a shadow. Or screams, I think. They were drowned out by the whispers. Never going to leave. But I could make it. The following is not scratched. The journal was open when I woke up. But I didn't write it. I don't even remember waking up before now, and no one else would have written this. Not even Pinky or Dash can be this cold. I felt better after I put it out of my mind, but it didn't stop there. I went to go my turn to watch, letting Bulwark take a break. But the next day, the next thing I knew, Dash was telling me to get some rest. I was just looking at the town, the library, the black in the distance, and the time just seemed to fly by. 
barely seemed like a few minutes. Then I saw the clock and went to my room. It had been hours. I asked Dash if anyone had come to talk to me. She didn't think so, and I don't remember anyone. She must have thought I was crazy. Maybe I'm not as well as I think. But there's a few of us left. I can't just lie around and let everyone else take care of me. I have to keep pulling my weight. I just have to. At least I'm not having the nightmares anymore. May 3rd. It's quiet. That's what Dash said. But she's wrong. Sleeping. Watch. It all just goes by so fast. Except when I hear them and see them. Shadows moving in, the black. The whispers, hidden in silence. They're always there. Even when I can't see or hear it. I told Dash and Big Mac. They thought I was joking or that my nerves were getting the better of me. I know what I saw. I know what I heard. It's only quiet because they're waiting and watching. It couldn't just be me. Every wind sounds like a howl. Every tap sounds like banging hooves. Creaking sounds like hushed, quiet hoof steps. Sneaking up from behind. How can I not treat them like that? I have to be ready. I won't let it happen again. I won't let Apple Bloom get hurt again. The writing on this page is shaky, sporadic, and spaced randomly. It has been compiled with ease of reading in mind. May 3rd? 5th? 4th? I can't remember. I remember writing these things, but not them. In that, how many came? I thought it was always this many. I... If I keep writing, I'll remember. It's working, I think. I'm supposed to keep watch somewhere. Dash will know, or Banner? Is it ever going to come back up? Is Twilight still there and the others? Still trying, I hope. Fix it. Please let her fix it. The others that came? Thirteen. Seven? For now, it's seven in the family. Are the others gone? Changed? Is that what will happen to all of us? Is that why I can't remember? Why can everyone else? The noises and shadows don't stop. They were always there. You want to didn't notice? I want to make them stop and leave. I keep trying. Want me to? To. To. Not now. Always not. But I have to sleep. Maybe it's my nerves or... Please let it end. This page is stained with blots of ink and blood, along with several patches of wet parchment. There are still very little signs of bloodshed within the farmhouse that can substantiate this entry. May 5th. I woke up from the nightmares. I can remember now, but it was hazy before. I was all alone downstairs. It was dark but warm. It wasn't like the shadows, like the cold, but there was no light. There were whispers. I kept getting louder and louder, begging me to stop. I heard Mom and Dad. They said they were sad and angry, and they just all sounded so angry. I tried to move or run, but I couldn't. The walls started shaking. The window shattered, and I felt something behind me. I woke up. I sat there, thinking, trying to understand and ignore it. And then I heard screams. It was Apple Bloom. I knew it before I heard it. I jumped to my hooves and ran into the hallway. It was dark, and the barricade was gone, and the doors to the other rooms were broken. I saw them. Those things from downstairs. But they were darker. They were swallowing the light. There were three. I couldn't see into the room. I called for Apple Bloom and the others, but I only heard the screaming. I think there were whispers, too. I ran to them. I had to help everyone. I had to. It seemed to go on forever. I fought like forever. I never fought like that. Like some gung-ho Mustang. I stopped when Dash pulled me away. The barricade was still there. The doors weren't broken. It was bright. The screams stopped. Granny. Big Mac. Apple Bloom. They were... Why did I do it? I could not see. I felt sick and confused and scared. I just wanted a reason. I told Dash to leave. 
for the others and as much as they could carry. Find Twilight. I had to yell to make her. They broke a window and ran. Six hours ago. I buried them. And I said a few words. I begged them to forgive. I don't deserve it. I should have stopped it or... Mom. Dad. All of them. I'll never see them again. In the dark, waiting, what I deserve. I'm so sorry. I'm still here. Still alive, at least. I hope this is live. I was foolish to get but it didn't last forever. I feel clarity now. I found out how to break free. I found out how to move quietly and unseen. I found out how to speak to you, whoever you are, without them knowing. Like static to them, I'm trying to find the others to save them, to snap them out of it. Maybe together we can fix it. Or maybe make sure it doesn't happen again. They're preparing for something. I don't have much time. Wish me luck. You'll need it more.